All right, so let's begin again with 802.15.4 standard which is used in many of the other IoT protocols. We are just going to, the reason I'm presenting 802.15.4 is because we want to talk about some of the topology issues, okay? So first of all, 15.4 is the base on which many of the standards are made. So 15.4 is used by Jigdi, is used in 6 flow pan, is used in wireless heart, MyY and ISA 100.11a. So if you go to buy a product, you will never hear 15.4, you will hear one of these other names. Okay, because that is how they are sold in the market. And most, most popular of these is Jigdi, right? So we will discuss Jigdi in one of these later lectures, actually the next lecture after this. And um, so we are just going to finish 15.4 here. So 15.4 is a low rate wireless personal area network. Okay, so two things you notice, low rate. So this is not designed for very high speed video or anything. This is just for IoT devices, that's why it's low rate. And personal area means it doesn't go very far either. And that's how you save. And then it uses 2.4 gigahertz band, which is the same band which is used by Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And in that band, there are 80 megahertz available. And so we use 16 5 megahertz channels. Okay. Now we noticed there that for Wi-Fi, we use 20 megahertz channels. For Bluetooth, we used um, 1 megahertz frequency hopping, right? So we had 80 channels, 80, actually you can call them channels or 80 frequency things and then we just frequency hopped. Here we are having 5 megahertz channel and um, you get 250 kilobits per second out of that and only 50 kilobits you get at the application. So. So phi rate means this is how the bits, if, if, you, if you notice the bit on the wireless and you will no, notice there are 250 kilobits going per second. But most of these bits might be overhead and other things. And by the time you reach the application, you get 50 kilobits. And um, so how much current, it depends upon the symbol rate. So basically that is a standard. The peak current depends upon the symbol rate, multi-level, 4 bit per symbol. So what they are saying is that you take 4 bits just like we do in QPSK, not QPSK, QAM16. We take 4 bits and then make a symbol out of that and that is what is used and so the current will depend upon how many, how many, yeah, we have 64 QAM, then of course it will be different color current than, you know, than 16 QAM, right? The larger the QAM, more the power required. Things which are similar to 11 are direct sequence spread spectrum, CSMA, CA, back off, beacon and coordinator. Okay. So this also uses direct sequence spread spectrum, which you know, that means that you take one, one symbol and make into many chips. Okay. And then you send those chips using a code. So that is first part. CSMA, CA, I was just describing in the other lecture and that was you sense this uh, channel and if there is nobody then you, you do a random number and then you start. Back off is sent. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> why does uh, a higher quantum take more current? Oh, because it's just more work too. I mean like if um, if you have to take 8 bits, convert into symbols or whatever, right? So it's just more work. and. Uh, the circuitry, the computation, the FPGA and whatever is required is a little bit more complex. That's all. It's electronics. So, I mean, I, I can't go any more detail than that. Um, all right. So now the, we were back to here. Beacon. So beacon is same way. There is a beacon which is sent by the coordinator and the beacon has some information about, you know, whose packets are there uh, waiting and all that and when the time starts. And instead of access point, we have a coordinator. So, coordinator is a function which any node can become a coordinator. So, you just don't buy a 11, 15.4 access point. 
unlike Wi-Fi where there is an access point which is separate, here any device can become a coordinator. I think this is very similar to Bluetooth as well. Lower rate and short distance means low power, low energy and then every node has a 64 bit address. So this you have to understand and this is the key part that we know that each basically most of the devices have a 48 bit what we call IEEE 802 address or Ethernet address, MAC address right but now they have to have a 64 bit address and that 64 bit address is called EUI 64. EUI stands for extended unique ID. And unique ID means it is globally unique, just like the MAC address, no other device will have that UI address anywhere in the world, okay. And so the way you get 64 bit is that you take your 48 bit, in the 48 bit, if, if some of you might remember how did they assign, the very first bit is universal, sorry, uh, uh, unicast or multicast. The second bit is global or local, then there are 22 bits of manufacturer and then there are 24 bits which are assigned by the manufacturer. So you get total 48 in case of Ethernet. Here 40 bits are assigned by the manufacturer so they get 16 more bits to assign after the 22 bits that they are given by the, by the international organization. So they get total of 60 bits. Okay. All right, 64 bit. So basically the last part which was 24 bit in Ethernet is now 40 bit, 16 bit longer. And so you can just address more devices. No segmentation reassembly simply because of simplicity. Mac frame size is 127 bytes. So very small frames. Okay, with a payload of 77 bytes. Out of 127, about 50 or so are gone in the bytes are gone in the headers and you are left with 77 bytes, so very small packets. Alright, and that's by design, that is what we need for a small devices like sensor networks. However, that will cause a lot of problem as we will see later on. Yeah, go ahead. Regarding the growth of IoT, which is like going very fast, uh, is 40 bits uh, enough, you know, because each address should be globally unique? I mean... Is 40 bit good enough? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, when we were designing Ethernet addresses, and I remember that in 1980s, we felt 48 bit will take you to the whole universe. By the way, this is not this is not global. This is universal, right? Universe is bigger than the world, right? We can we can count the objects on Mars and every other place. That is the universe, right? So we felt 48 bit would be good enough. Now when we came here in 19 whatever 2015, we felt that may not be enough, so we have 60, 60 bits which is good enough, alright. Before that, after Ethernet and between this, in 1991, we were still counting as to how many objects could be in the world and we thought that for IPv6, 128 bit is required. 64 bit is too small at that time, 64 bit is too small and 256 is too large. So 128 is the right one and with 128 bit you can address every single piece of sand on the earth. Okay, that's what they said at that time and um, but who knows. You see, I mean sand may be too big a piece we may want to address a molecule. <laughs> so, so right now it is 64 bit for this application, for this group, because before this we already had 128 bit and we found out that that is just too big, it is just wasting money, you know that's why IPv6 is not coming in because it's just too much time taken to address the people. If your name is so long, nobody will call you, you know, <laughs> because they take so much of um, energy to call you. So here it is 64 bit, yeah. From the previous slide, you said 64 bits for global addresses and 16 bits local addresses. Here is like global only. For the and which slide I said 16 bit? No, no, I mean. Oh yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Hold on, no, no. 
So there are two extremes. <coughs> One is that we need to be able to address every object in the world. So we need 64 bit. If everybody needs a unique name, right? But we don't have energy to call their full name. I told you, if your name is so big, nobody will call you. Right? And so what you do is you give everybody a nickname. Right? At your home, they don't call you by full name. With your name, your father's name, your you know, thing like that. They don't call you at home. At home, they just call you by your nickname. So inside the local area network, we will use 16 bits. Right? So that is your local address. And, and there might be other nodes which might have the same local address, but they are in their home. Right? This is globally unique. Actually, universally unique. Alright, so the, is that clear? 64 bit is the address that you come in and you say, okay, this is my 64 bit name and then we give you a 16 bit name. Yeah. Why we need the, uh, the global and local bit, the one bit? Yeah, because, okay, so there are two bits there in the front. One is called universal, sorry, uni unicast and multicast. So we may want to address a group of people, a group of nodes, Universally, for example, I want to send a packet to all routers in the world. Okay? To all bridges in the world. That is a multicast address. So, how do you do that? You need that bit, right? And the first bit, if it is, um, if it is zero, that means unicast. One means multicast. Okay? Second one is global or local. Okay, now this is a leftover from actually Ethernet. When we were designing Ethernet addresses, which are now called 802 addresses, some people wanted local addresses, which means they can change it depending upon where you take it. On the first floor, the address is different. The second floor, the address is different. And third floor, the address is different. So they were local addresses. And your address would be, you know, the third computer on the fourth floor in the fifth room. That's your local address, right? So you could figure out your location from the address. That's what people thought the address was, your location, right? But some people said, no, 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 address should not be your location. Address should be your name, right? So those wanted you universally, they wanted they wanted them global addresses. So your address doesn't change whether you're on the third floor or fourth floor. It's the same, same address. You see what I mean? So that was the global address. So, so they said, okay, we will allow both. This bit will indicate whether it is a global or local. So if you put a zero there, this means global. If you put a one there, it means local. So we explain all this in the Ethernet address, Ethernet basically, I mean 473 again, you know, when we talk about Ethernet. And except there is only one exception to that zero and one. Every time I explain in, in, Ethan, in, in 473, I have to explain this. Except that when it is all broadcast address, all broadcast address is all one. Okay? In that case, the second bit is one. Does not mean that's a local broadcast. Or this is a, that does not mean it's a local address. It's a global address. So all ones is only exception. Okay? That is always used for everybody, you know, basically, right? and um, globally. And so, I mean, so the multicast addresses are used for such things. Say, for example, you might have an address where you want to address all HP router, uh, uh, HP printers in this in this building, right? You send out a multicast address R to, of course, we use it for all bridges for sure. So if you want to say all access points, please tell me what is your name. So we can have a multicast address, okay? So in the network management, Multicast addresses are used quite commonly. All right, so after that, we talked about that segmentation reassembly is not, a lot, is not there and, and the addresses packets are very small.